As growers, researchers and industry people were welcomed to the Adelaide GRDC Grains Research Update, they were reminded of the gains industry R&D has been delivering in the southern region. Over the time of their records at Bullaburra, water use efficiency of their farm has nearly quadrupled. That photo there on the left hand side was taken in 1982 and in the same place, same paddock, same time of year in 2019 with exactly the same rainfall within two to three mils. How far have we come? Day one's first keynote speaker was Chief Economist with the Australian Export Grains Innovation Centre, Ross Kingwell. His topic, Australia's grain industry in 2030, a look into the future. So this talk is probably going to be a bit novel because I want to lift your gaze strategically beyond the next handful of years to look at what might be the landscape of Australia's grains sector in a decade. A landscape of extremes that continues to seriously disrupt Australian agricultural production. Production affected by a list of factors. Let's start with soil management. We know that Australian crop production occurs against the backdrop of a fairly volatile climate with drying trends evident in some grain growing regions of Australia. So how farmers use rain, that is soil moisture to grow grain, is increasingly important. So making the most out of your soils, changing their characteristics through liming, through gypsum, through minimum tillage or direct drill technology, all those innovations and practice changes are trying to get at more efficiently using the rain that underpins grain production. Some of the other issues that are, are affecting uh, Australia's grain production are technological change, so new high yielding varieties, the use of new herbicides, even things like precision technology, the placement of fertiliser and, and herbicides more accurately, controlled traffic farming where you reduce your fuel use by reducing overlap. There's the crop mixes, so over the next decade what sort of mixes of crops should farmers consider? Should they continue to mostly focus on wheat? Should they shift more into oil seeds and pulses? So those are important issues, again, that represent opportunities and challenges for Australia's grain sector. What will have a major influence on cropping decisions, the audience was told, is climate change. More than 100 years of documented mean spring temperature anomalies in South Australia clearly illustrates a warming trend. The last 30 years in particular highlight a worsening trend, and Ross Kingwell remarked that his home state of WA is experiencing similar springs. In our northern grain region, farmers are beginning to talk about heat frosts, where a few really hot days in spring are having quite pronounced effects on grain yield and grain quality. And remember, these anomalies are for the entire spring period. They're not taking into account those few really stinking hot days that strip moisture out of crops at precisely the time when the grain filling occurs. Go back another 30 years to 1960, and the comparison between spring mean temperatures from 1960 to 1990 were milder than those recorded between 1990 and 2019. So when it comes to climate change, the other consideration is that there is evidence emerging of a decline in annual rainfall in many southern grain growing regions of Australia. In particular, we're noticing that there are less frequent wet winters and wet autumns and so that becomes a challenge to grain production when you have less grain production because of wet winters being absent. The reduced number of wet autumns again evidenced by the Bureau's records for the past 30 years, especially when compared to the previous 30. The lack of wet autumns, which were relied on to replenish soil moisture profiles, has changed farming practices and it's no surprise that farmers have moved to dry sowing. It's no surprise that water use efficiency has become 
a really important goal in cropping seasons. So the ramifications of that climate change is already beginning to show up in that our crop yield growth is being constrained. And in AGIC we've done comparisons with yield growth in Australia versus Argentina, Russia, Canada, Ukraine, and we are at much lower rates of yield increase than our competitors. AGIC's chief economist also made the point that despite competition from these low-cost grain-producing competitors, South Australia would remain an exporter of grain. In addition, there'll be domestic market opportunities, with Australia's population forecast to hit 30 million by 2030, increasing the eastern seaboard's need for more grain. So I think the interesting story here is that when the population grows, when the demand for feed grain increases, so does the demand for human consumption. So more people means more beer is consumed, which means the local demand for malting barley increases. People are still going to be consuming their breakfast cereals, their bread, their cakes, their biscuits. So again, the demand for flour is going to increase. That's a, a useful story for grain growers. If you're in an environment where you're constrained by rainfall and heat, then you probably can't profit from growing feed grains because you're so yield constrained. But at least you can profit from the growth in human consumption. You can grow human consumption grains like wheat or malting barley or pulses that people will increasingly need in Australia. The flip side is, well, where in Australia is it best and most cheap to grow feed grains? The answer is probably more in the high rainfall areas. So I, I suspect you'll see spatial change where more feed grain production will come out of the higher rainfall areas and the farmers will benefit not only from having livestock production in those high rainfall areas, but they will benefit from feed grain production where that feed will be used by industries such as chicken and pork. South Australia is uniquely placed when it comes to mixed farm enterprises that include sheep. While the national flock has significantly declined over the past 30 years, South Australian sheep production has been relatively steady. And even though less red meat is consumed compared to pork and poultry, Australia's population growth will maintain demand for lamb, and AGIC expects red meat and wool prices to remain firm for some years. Lamb's relatively high price compared to poultry makes for a win-win outcome for mixed farm enterprises. So South Australia I, I think is really wonderfully positioned. It hasn't cut its sheep population so it, it can invest in more grain finishing its animals to make money, more money, via the sheep enterprise from the grain it grows. I think there won't be a change in the proportion of grains grown on farms, that is farmers will retain their, their sheep grain mix in most parts of South Australia. I think there's opportunities to improve supply chains further in South Australia, particularly to capitalise on the inland rail because that will facilitate grain flows into the regions of northern New South Wales and southern Queensland. Also having greater competition at ports where you can cheaply move grain from farm onto coastal ships and, and transfer that grain rapidly and cheaply across regions by ship. Again, I think that's a structural change that we will see. Question Time gave AGIC's chief economist the opportunity to answer online and audience questions such as, should the 2030 outlook call for research into increasing feed use efficiency of lambs and cattle? I'm with you. I, I think that's an opportunity. That's a win-win. You add value to your grain by embedding it into a product that has very little competitors. Another asked, what are the implications of greater grain flows on infrastructure? What do I think is going to happen? I think there's going to be a lot more grain on roads. 
Another question asked, was more imported cheap grain a likely source of livestock feed if local grain is in short supply or too expensive? For chicken meat, 70% of your cost of production is feed grain. I think that is going to be a structural issue that's going to come to the fore and that will be both a political and a biosecurity issue. To recap, Ross Kingwell told the update audience South Australia's grains industry will benefit from market opportunities in eastern Australia due to proximity to the eastern states, investment in grain supply chains, firm red meat and wool prices and a prolonged drought recovery. This video is one in a series of update videos recorded at the 2020 GRDC Grains Research Updates. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.